folks and welcome to my channel. My name is Erin McGough. I'm a filmmaker and career educator living in New York. And today we're talking about how to professionally quit your job. Okay, so first of all, right off the bat, I just want to say that this is country dependent. This video, this advice is for US work culture, laws and policies. I know some other countries have laws around quitting. Here, it's like the wild, wild west. You can just pick up and leave same day. So I just wanted to say, keep that in mind. If you aren't working in the US, this video might not be relevant for you. But if you're looking to quit your job in the US, this video is for you. First of all, quitting can be kind of a stressful and surprisingly emotional thing. If you're leaving a toxic workplace or coworkers you love, or you find finally got that dream job, it can come with a lot of mixed emotions. Some people feel guilty, some people feel relieved, some people feel stressed, most people feel all the feels. I have decided to step down from my post and spend more time with my family. I do not fear the unknown. I just want you to know it's completely normal. We spend most of our waking hours working, so when you change what you're doing at work, it can feel really monumental. And a lot of our identities tend to be wrapped up in what we do, so any type of shift in that can feel really big. So just know it's totally fine to have weird emotions around this. Take some time to process them, do what you gotta do, but it's important to keep in mind that this is professional. It's not personal. Okay, now we're going to talk about order of operations. It's really important that you follow this process in order to best advocate for yourself. Quitting can get messy fast and we definitely don't want you to get the short end of the stick. Okay, so step one, you need to have the new offer with the company signed, sealed, delivered. Everything has to be signed. You have to have your start date and salary. It's all good to go. Because the last thing you want to do is quit this job and then have your new job be like, oh, well, we weren't sure about it yet. We don't actually need you to start now. And you're like, I great, now I don't have any job. <laughs> Step two, you have to pick your last day at work. Now in the US, it's customary to give a two weeks notice. That way you can spend time wrapping up projects, training others, delegating tasks, and you give the company a little bit of time to find somebody to replace you. This is not a legal requirement. You do not legally have to give two weeks. It is a customary professional courtesy and it's what most people do if it's a toxic workplace you can get up and walk out and never see any of them again that is within your rights I quit what Michael you have no idea how high I can fly but again it is customary to give this like two-week buffer even though the company can just lay you off the same day which is a topic for another video and something else that's important to keep in mind is that when you do quit and you do have that conversation and put in your two weeks they can tell you just leave now. Like they can not accept your two week courtesy. So it's really about like just knowing if your boss is like a normal boss and they'll just like do the two week thing and be professional and mature or if they're just like gonna be a jerk about it. It's in your best interest to leave the company in good standing. I know it can feel tempting to throw a tantrum or rant or finally get things off your chest. Hey Kelly. Screw you. Excuse me, that is no way to address a superior. Oh yeah? Screw you too but it is not only the immature thing to do, it's unprofessional and it's not a good way to advocate for yourself. A lot of people don't realize how small the world is and how quickly your reputation can get damaged. Now, if you would like to give feedback about a toxic or abusive or just plain bad manager, there are ways you can do that that are way more effective than you putting your reputation on the line. You want to leave your job with as much grace as possible, and you can also make an impact if you want. You can ask for an exit interview where you give the company feedback as to why you're leaving. The ironic thing is that good companies usually offer exit interviews because they want feedback, and it's the bad companies who usually don't, so it doesn't always work. And then you can always ask your manager if they would like to receive feedback from you, but don't just go around ranting and yelling and venting at them. Save that for Glassdoor.com com, fishbowl, your therapist, and your friends. <laughs> so pick your last day. It's usually a Friday, but it doesn't have to be. Step three, schedule a brief meeting with your boss. So message them and just say, you know, hey, do you have a few minutes to chat? Or pull them aside after a meeting and just say, hey, can I put 10 minutes on your calendar on Friday? They'll probably know what this meeting is about. Michael? Yes, Toby. Um, I need to talk to you in your office. So it'll just take two seconds. <clears throat> I know quitting can feel kind of awkward, and if you're a people pleaser, it can feel even painful to disappoint somebody or to break bad news to them. But it's important to remember that if your boss has been managing for any amount of time, 
this is not their first quitting meeting, okay? They've had lots of people quit. Onboarding and offboarding people is literally part of their job description. Having this conversation is literally part of their job. So remember, it's not personal, it's just professional. It's just business. You don't owe the company anything. They aren't your family, despite what they might tell you. They're not your family. They're not your friends, they're just your colleagues. It's just a job, you go there, you work, you go home. When you find a new job, you go to the new job. That's it. Step four, verbally tell your boss that you're putting in your two weeks and that you are moving on to a new job. It's really important that up until you're meeting with your boss that you don't tell anybody about your plans to quit. Word can spread really quickly throughout an office and you want your boss to hear it from you first. If you and your boss had a good relationship, this will probably be more of a casual, I'm so sorry, I got a new offer. You were such a great boss. I just have to accept this offer. And if you hated your boss, it might be more of a, thanks for the opportunity, gotta move on now. <laughs> it's important to keep it authentic, but also professional. Here's a sample script. Hi Brian, thanks for sitting down with me. So. I'll cut right to the chase. I have accepted an offer at another company and will be putting in my two weeks today. So my last day will be Friday the 14th. I've enjoyed my time here and I'm grateful for the opportunities. However, it just feels like the right time to move on. Now, there are several different ways that they might respond to that. The good boss will probably respond like this. Oh no, that's what I suspected. We hate to lose you, but I'm happy that you found an opportunity that you're excited about. A mean boss though might try to guilt trip you. What? You're completely blindsiding me. How are you just going to leave when we're so busy and we're barely getting by as is? This is gonna make everyone's lives so much harder. Remember, this is not a you problem, this is a them problem. Their lack of ability to properly staff their company is not your problem. They're trying to guilt trip you, but you don't owe them anything. Giving them two weeks is a courtesy. Quitting is something that people do literally all day, every single day, all over the world. It's not personal, it's just professional. Ignore them, don't even give them your energy and just go with grace. If they try to pull this on you, try something like this. I understand, however, I have no doubt that you'll be able to find somebody to replace me in no time. And as I said, I'm willing to stand for two weeks to aid with the transition. Don't waste your emotional energy or capacity on somebody who literally doesn't care about you. They aren't worth your energy. Or the third option that you need to be ready for is the counter offer. They might say something like this. Oh no, is there anything that we can do to get you to stay? Name your number and I'll take it to HR. 90% of the time I tell people to not even consider the counter offer. If you have gone through all of this work to find a new job, there is a reason that you're leaving. Now, if the company, your boss, your coworker, the clients, literally every single thing about the company is great except for the pay, and they're willing to change the pay, then maybe you can consider staying, but just know that they're probably not gonna raise it again after that. That's probably a done deal for a while. But if there are any other reasons that you are leaving, the culture, the colleagues, the work, anything like that, don't don't consider the counter offer because there is a reason that you are leaving. You know, unless it's like insane, if they like quadruple your salary, like, I don't know, maybe then consider it. But I feel like that probably doesn't happen. Don't be tempted, get out of there. Now they might ask some more follow-up questions like, where are you going to go work next? Or like, why are you leaving? And it's just up to you if you want to answer these, but they aren't entitled to any of those answers. But if you want to tell them, you know, oh, I'm just going to work for, you know, another big sales company, or oh, I'm just going to work for another tech company, or you can tell them the actual name, it just entirely is up to you. And if they ask you for reasons why you're leaving, tell them. I feel like the company culture here hasn't been that great lately and I'm really looking for a place where I can feel more included. I feel like the company culture here has gotten really competitive recently and I'm looking for a more healthy work dynamic and environment. Feel free to tell them professionally what's up. And you can always schedule an exit interview with HR where you can give feedback to the company. If you really care about the company and maybe you left some coworkers behind, this might be a good opportunity to tell the company about some blind spots that they have. But again, it's entirely up to you to do that. So the next step is that after you leave that meeting with your boss where you verbally tell them that you're quitting, you want to draft a resignation letter. It can just be a really simple email, you know, just saying, hi boss, thanks for meeting with me. I gave you my two weeks notice today. My last day will be this date. I'll spend the next two weeks, you know, delegating tasks and wrapping up projects. You just want to have everything in writing. That's a general good rule of thumb. Just have everything that you do in your life in writing because it's good proof. <laughs> you never know. Now, depending on your company, you might need to have another meeting with HR. So there might be some other policies and procedures in place that you can ask your boss about. What paperwork you need to sign? Do you need to roll over your 401k? There might be just some little loose ends there. And then what's customary is that usually your boss will announce that you're moving on. Um, so you don't just go spreading it around the office. That's typically what's the professional thing to do. And something people like to do is, you know, send little thank you notes or tell people, you know, here's my contact information if you want to reach me, if I can help with 
with anything. Connect with people on LinkedIn. You can even ask for like evergreen letters of recommendation. This is also a good time to try and get any like stats and to write down maybe like what you did there or get some portfolio pieces, you know, only download what's legal, but this is a good time to collect anything that you can. And then when the two weeks is up, you can leave and go to your next job knowing that you did everything right and professionally. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok for daily career and life advice and subscribe to my newsletter, advicewitherin.com slash newsletter. Congrats on your new job. Congrats on quitting your job. This is a huge accomplishment. I'm sure you just finished a huge journey of job interviews and resumes and all that stuff. So I just want to be the first one to say, congrats, you did it. I'm so proud of you. Remember, you got this and I'll see you next time.